Welcome back to the channel and a new video. A little bit different. Chris is actually away and I'm going to do a bit of a let's finish some bits video. I'm going to crack on. We've had two new tyres for the little Fiat 500. This is all stuff that I can do in the background without it interfering with our videos. And it is all the little bits and bobs that you'll never get to see. Let's get that wheel put back on there. Let's get that space saver dropped back off to Kent Auto Salvage. We borrowed that. Then we're going to do some bits on that Audi Q5. Let's do it. Straight into it here. I couldn't have a week off. It's only one day, isn't it? Straight on with that back wheel. It's been sitting in the back of the van for a few days. I wanted to get that on there so that we can get that spare wheel dropped back. Nice and simple. It's like a wind tunnel down here and I didn't bring the mics. I've just dropped that space saver off to Mark and I thought, why am I here? Let's get that drop glass out that smashed on Chris on a little Fiat 500. Unfortunately, someone's destroyed this door, ripping it all apart. So should make nice, easy, light work for us. Let's get that uh, head back and we'll chuck that in because we are still getting some bad weather. It has been raining. Let's get that car sealed back up. And then moving on to the driver's side door panel, I can hear straight away, as soon as I open that, there's a load of glass in there. I've took off these Fiat 500 door panels more times than I can ever remember. Nice little cut there along that panel, try and save it. You don't just want to rip that off, put the door panel on after. It makes an awful wreck it. Bit of time and it's not changing the window, the glass itself, that's the hard bit on these cars. Just look at how much glass. It literally, they explode. And it goes everywhere. That's the, pretty much the whole window has fallen inside that door, apart from this little bit that's left out here that I'm going to need to vacuum up anyway. Anyway, let's get in there, get all that vacuumed out and get the new bit of glass fitted. So straight in there with that vacuum and I'm only filming a little tiny bit of this here. It is going to be the longest part of this job is getting this glass out. It gets in everywhere. And it, it once it explodes glass, it shoots up, shoots left, shoots right. It goes absolutely everywhere. Right, hopefully you see this. Three or four people in that video said, how can that window just explode? And believe it or not, that's the actual cause of it there. And it's like a little guide that keeps it in the rubber. And if you can see, there's one on that glass. And that one, as previously, I mean, it all looks all right there. Looks the same. But it's got a little split in the back of it there. I'll probably just break that off to show you. And that's why that's popped out and caused that window to explode. So you've actually got to pull the rubber. I'm just going to use this uh, trim clip remover. It's got to go behind the rubber there. It's quite tight. But once it goes in, it should lock in. And then we'll get the window up in its correct position in the rubber and then we'll clip it in the motor. Unfortunately, it's too hard to try and record it and show it with both hands because I'm standing right here in front of it. So I'll get that just clipped in there and then get it slotted into the motor and put the window up. Here we go. And then let's lower that down into. So simple, this glass. Let me try and aim that down now. See that little clip? It just. Well, I've given it a good vacuum out, but. You've got to double check there's no more glass in there. We won't get carried away and go too crazy on the Fiat 500. It was just those little bits I wanted to do. I'll give it a quick vacuum out, get rid of the glass so that when we're getting in and out of it, you're not causing any damage, any scratches or any rips. I think this part's leather, this part's cloth, this part's leather. 
I did chuck that white steering wheel airbag on there. A lot of you said, oh, it'll look all right, but um, the more I look at it, the more I'm convinced it needs a black one, but of course, put it in the comments down below. The window, all in. I'm not gonna show, yeah, did you hear that? I was, I was vacuuming that out for ages, and I can still hear glass in there, but there is little holes in the bottom, so should fall out of them. Anyway, enough on that little car. That's the tires fitted, window done. I am gonna move on to this, and I think this is gonna be quite difficult because the curtain airbags, I was just looking, they've actually, the handles have actually pulled through the holes on this one, you can see. So they are gonna be a little bit of a problem to get out, and it also looks quite badly creased. So this may be the first one where we've actually got to put a roof lining in it. But I'm gonna get cracking and get that out again. This is something that can be, this can go off, this can be done, while we're concentrating, you can see the engine sitting in there. We've got it lined up for the door. That is our next job, but we've also got that as well. So Paul our Roman at Airbag Service Limited, they are our new go-to place. There's a link in the description down below for them where they will repair this seat. You see the repair they did on the X3 was incredible. Unfortunately, this one has just popped open on its seams as well. So it's very repairable and of course this will be reloaded repacked and put back in there and these curtain airbags they are i mean this one didn't come from the auction did it so they haven't been cut they can be reset and save us a fortune they can be reloaded so we'll get them ones out as well let's see how we get on so on to these uh, curtain airbags and if you remember if you're a um viewer of the channel for quite a while you'll remember we did an audi q2 quite some time back and i actually did the curtains in that and it was exactly the same these were identical similar sort of year to get out and it is just those little pin clips where you put a a pick in there pull them open and they they pop straight out so just like i said previously i won't bore you with taking both sides out but that is the driver's side curtain airbag there. And you can pretty much see it's in like this. This is almost a paper, like a material. And it's wrapped and it's in that. And then it's just got like rippable tape, you can see, where it actually shatters once it goes off. Shatters, what am I talking about? Splits. And you can see that that little piece of rubber was actually wrapped around it as well. And it just pops open. It's not designed to hold it at all. And you can see that it's just sticky tape. And there, again, sticky tape. This is the end that comes down the A pillar. So you can see it doesn't extend too far. That is pretty much it, but still quite a big thing, isn't it? Quite large. And I think we got quite lucky with the roof lining. Let's just jump in the back here. I think that's, oh, that's got cool. I think that's gonna be okay, isn't it? With a damp cloth, I'm going to say it, with warm water on it. Not damp warm water like I did last time. And then here you've got some tiny little bits. But I think once the handles are back in, I'm not going to try and push it up because I've still got this C-pillar cover here. Mind you, does it go over the top of that? It does. Let's, let's just try and push that in. Bear with me one second. So all pushed back up in there. I mean, it's not 100% how it should be, is it? But I think once all the handles are back in there, yeah, you're never going to tell, are you? That's going to be absolutely fine. Once that's, yeah. So we're not going to need a roof lining. Well, I'm saying that, but I haven't got to the other side yet. What I managed to do is just push this really, really hard. I managed to get it up high enough to actually get the handles out. And the handles are easy on these because they got a little black clip in them and you just pull that clip and the handle slides out. Right, let's move on. It's gonna be, be a bit more challenging that side, isn't it? Because the um, door doesn't open. <laughs> Maybe I'll get a, um, get the grinder out here, cut a little hole in that and try and get that to open. The chap did say he had it open once, so I should think it's probably just not the handles working. Anyway, let's move on. So on to the passenger side seat, and it is just four torques on this passenger seat and one little tiny wiring loom. And once I get this seat out and we go live, I'll show you the wiring loom. Very, very good idea and simple, the way that they 
they'd planned it out, the engineer, whoever designed it and made it. It was a fantastic idea. So once that was out, I moved on to that passenger side seat belt, and that's where I found a little bit of a problem as well. Onto the driver's side one, the same little problem. I will mention that a little bit further into the video. It, was, it shocked me actually, but they're both out and we're all done. Yeah. You see how quick I got those curtains out? The seat was very, very easy to get out as well. You've got that wiring. You can see the plug down there. And you just pulled the little cap off it, the cap's there. And you can just unplug everything. It all come out lovely. The seat belts. In fact, you can see what's on there, can't you? Thread lock. But only in this bolt here that holds the main seat belt. It had thread lock it was a nightmare to get out absolute nightmare so you've got that one down there you had that one for the main seat belt and then you've got this one here none of these were thread locked just that which is crazy i've never seen that before and these seat belts are locked out well that one's completely out so somebody was in the back there this one's locked out the passenger one was locked out as well and the driver's side actually felt okay but we said it before it's false economy to send off just two seat belts or three seat belts yeah you can plug it in and it'll tell you which ones are gone but it, they're there aren't they so i it's got late in the day now i'm going to come back in the morning and tackle those two rear seat belts and we're going to get this lot sent away and have it repaired you can see that seat look just on the seams that's all come undone and this is designed this uh this cotton, it's actually designed to, shatter, to shear away like that, for that to blow open. Anyway, let's get these put away. Back in the morning. That is as far as I can go on the Audi. Seat belts, everything all ready to go. The little combo van. So many people keep asking about the little combo van and genuinely it hasn't moved since we last did the video on it. So I've just booked it in with Josh over at JR Vehicle Services for an MOT. And of course it's going to need a run because i've previously said there's going to be excess smoke and you can see there is a little tiny bit of smoke coming out of that so it's going to get a good run now all the way over to maidstone let's put some miles on it get it mot'd and fingers crossed i can do a few more miles in this one and get it up for sale i'll get literally get bombarded in the email saying i still haven't seen it for sale of course they'll always be on instagram once we're happy with them and they'll be on there for sale. Right, let's get over to Josh. First proper run out on the road went absolutely bang on. No faults with it whatsoever. Got up to 60 mile an hour. Soon as I turned the lights on, I thought I'd, I'll test the horn, the squirters and the, the lights on the way. Just obviously it was raining, so I put the wipers on and it comes straight up, bing, bulb fault. So before we go in there and embarrass ourselves, let's get out and uh, get that light bulb changed. We, we're buy a bulb off of josh while we're here and we get that changed but i'm sure it come up drl but the drls are normally on straight away without the lights on aren't they yeah that's on so is that so it's not drls anyway we'll find out what one it is that looks a bit black doesn't it that little side light bulb i bet you it's that let's get it changed was in fact that main headlight bulb so josh just give me a new one and luckily these are sort of self-reset these Fiat's and Vauxhall's. So as soon as I turned it off, and then you start it back up, that little triangle, you see it's actually gone out on its own. So no, no, 15.1 miles I've done in it. No more faults. Let's quickly set that clock, because that's annoying, and we'll uh, wait for our turn. Another success story. So it has got a year's MOT on it now. All we need to do is put a few more miles on it. What have we got on trip A? Trip B, that's what that'll do. That's like 15.2. I really want to get that up to 100 before I'm happy to let this car go. Let's head back to the well, yard. It's a bit of everything here, but it is getting a lot, lot of little bits and pieces done, isn't it? So the van, I've got up to 30 miles in it, and I promise I'm going to get out and actually run that van next week and put them 100 miles on it and get it up for sale. The little smart car, few people do ask about it. We've done a lot in the background. We are pretty much ready here with this one. But we had a dent guy out. You can't glorify it. He come round, he looked at it. I showed him what needed doing. He agreed to do the job. And the day that he was due to arrive, he actually texted me and said, 
oh actually I've decided that that car's not really a good candidate for dent repair so I don't know why and he's not actually coming now so we're back to square one with it there is not a lot of work needs doing to this but I was going to have them few dents removed out that door there is another little dent there that wants removing out the quarter panel you can probably just about see and then there is some scuffs on the door which here what I'm going to get rid of with the mop and these scuffs here I'm going to get rid of as well and the only thing we had left to contend with was that scratch there so I mean we did all this work inside here didn't we it's such a lovely little car but that's where we're at with it if anyone does know a decent dent guy that wants to be on camera and enhance his business by putting it out to you guys and you know the audience we need a dent man around that I'm just going to move outside to two other little bits yeah, my apologies a little bit for the wind noise this motor home everyone still mentions this motor home and says that number plate must be worth a few quid what's going on with it and there's no excuse it got neglected it got pushed by it got pushed back there was other jobs to do so we left it but in the last video chris actually i did record it all but i've lost that footage a long time ago but he actually welded a whole new seal in there all the way along and even done the repair down there on that bottom court corner that you can see he's put a whole new corner on it so it does still need this corner we started digging it out and then we even ground up all of this here but we've got stuart coming now that this this summer's here summer's on its way stuart will come in on saturdays and he'll knock this out in a couple of saturdays i'm not promising it any in a minute anytime soon but he will get on this we get that welded up and we are going to do a bit of paint work around the bottom half of it and this motor home this summer will be sold it runs and drives lovely doesn't it I mean, I used it as a store for quite some time for my Series 1 Escort parts. They was all stored in there, as a couple of parts of them still are. And then moving on to the boat, I've just had to have the cover redone on the boat because the wind caught it and ripped it. But it is literally a couple of hours work up there to get this all put back together. And we are going to get on that very, very soon. Well, I've been out this morning as well and bought another car i'm not going to ruin it because you're going to watch this video first but it's it's orange so you'll know when you watch that video and right there behind the camera is actually another classic vehicle that i bought the other day and it is a running driving very nice clean example that you're going to see on the channel very very soon i am just waiting for a delivery driver but while i am waiting i'm going to quickly show you one other thing that's been in the background right, we have all seen the youtube thumbnails and the titles saying i bought the cheapest car i was the only bidder etc etc i am about to prove that this definitely i bought the cheapest car in the world and i was the only bidder so it is a full ka plus it is a 2018 you can see it's got some damage on it. It's got some horrible damage on it. I don't know the exact mileage. I'm going to get it up and I'm going to include it in this video in a minute. But airbags deployed, but it is only a cassette in the dash. And the steering wheel airbag, right? So it needs airbags. Bear with me here a minute. It's had a wallop in the front. You can see high up. It's done the end of the flitch there, the wing, the bonnet the rad pack, the crash bar, and you can see it has just tweaked around the end of that chassis leg. Now, answer me this honestly. Put your honest thoughts in the comment section down below. This car, let me just check how much it was because I want to get this starting right. starting bid on this car was or £125. Pounds. And I hit bid once, which knocked it up to £175. Pounds. I'll include the picture now. And as you can see, I was the only person that bid on this car for £175. Put it in the comments. Even if you didn't want it, would you bid for that car? That's £175 
for a 2018 car. It hasn't even broken the windscreen. That must be how much the windscreen's worth in this car. It's unbelievable. And I thought, do you know what? We'll just wait till someone's got one of these cars in or pick little bits and pieces up. The car was that cheap. I had a quick flick through on the day of the auction and I didn't even see that. It's got a bit of quarter panel damage and a bit of bumper damage. But genuinely, would you have bid on this car if you see that nobody else was bidding on it? We've had this sat here for quite a while and a lot of people have said, what is, I've spotted that little KA Plus in the background. We've had this sat here that long. I applied for a logbook and we've had the logbook for it for weeks. And I'm gonna think of a plan for this car, but for 175 pound, I just couldn't say no. So Chris had a holiday booked and we decided, do you know what, we're both gonna have a week off. I've got loads of stuff to get done at home because I'm putting my house up for sale and I've got so much to get done. And Chris has gone off on his holidays. But I have snuck off sort of and come into work and just done these few little bits. And it was actually nice to have a rest away from what I'm doing at home. I have been speaking to Chris to and fro with a few text messages and he looks like he's been very, very busy. For those of you that are interested, I'm gonna chuck a few little clips in here now. Thank you everybody for watching. If you enjoyed this video, of course, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. If you wanna follow us on Instagram, both of the links are in the description down below, as is everything else. Like, subscribe and share, and we'll see you very, very soon in the next one. Now Merlin's out there to watch, so he just goes for a swim. Merlin has learned to walk around the stage without dropping the skittle, and it takes a lot of concentration. He's got to watch where he's going, not watch the item on his nose, but he can even do this without dropping it. That really is impressive balancing.